Welcome to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we bring in entrepreneurs who have created online businesses and improved their lifestyles. Here's your host, Rohit Malhotra. Hi everyone, I'm Rohit from LifeSelfMastery.com and today we have Sona Shah, who co-founded an early stage startup, New Penda, a global health social enterprise creating technologies to reduce mortality in low resource uh, settings through the use of vital science monitor. Sona is an alumnus of uh, Columbia University with master's degree in biomedical engineering. Uh, New Penda is also an alumni of Techstars uh, uh, Chicago class of 2018. Welcome to the show, uh, Sona. Thank you very much for having me. Awesome. So, so you do share your journey, you know, how you uh, got into entrepreneurship and why did you uh, start building or working on your startup, uh, New Panda? Sure. Uh, so my background, um, my undergraduate degree was in chemical engineering and I graduated from Georgia Tech a semester early. So I decided, you know, why not travel a bit before starting to work? Um, so I found myself in Western Kenya. So I was a teacher out there, really nothing to do with my engineering degree, but loved the culture and the community. So I was out there for three months um, and it was just absolutely a stunning place, not just in terms of the landscape, but the, the people as well, um, that I, of course, was exposed to several different inequities just being in a, in a rural community in Western Kenya. Um, eventually, I did come back to the U.S. and I started working at a pharmaceutical company um, in their research and development department and um, really enjoyed working with large bioreactors and understanding the engineering and healthcare behind things. Um, I did find myself thinking that my kids in Kenya would likely never have access to the medicines that I was helping make and eventually that started to eat away at me a bit. Um, so I decided to go back to graduate school at Columbia uh, University to figure out some way to combine international development with engineering and healthcare, really a way to provide better healthcare to everyone in the world. Um, in my second semester at Columbia University, I met my now co-founder, Teresa, and we took a biodesign course together that really walks through um, understanding what a problem is first and then creating solutions to help solve that problem. So we started thinking about newborn mortality and why it's so much higher in low resource settings than it is here in the U.S. And so we got some funding from the university and decided to use that to go out to Uganda to do a needs assessment across multiple hospitals. And when we were in these hospitals, it was astonishing to us that very few of the wards had functioning medical devices. And um, we more often than not found these devices in a room that the nurses called the equipment graveyard. So really just a room full of broken medical devices. And that's because the uh, commercially available devices just don't meet the unique constraints that we see in many of the facilities, anything from power instability, wireless connectivity. Um, so at that point, we decided that we had to start Neopenda to really use our engineering backgrounds to design appropriate technologies for these settings and really be able to improve quality of care for patients um, at the same time. Got it. And, uh, you know, before you, you started working on your business, uh, you know, uh, did you always have that entrepreneurial bug since your childhood where your parents into entrepreneurship or, uh, you know, is it, uh, you know, uh, I understood the story, but uh, have, have you had that entrepreneurial spirit since your childhood days? Yeah, I think so, but not... Um... Uh, not in the traditional sense. So I, I never grew up thinking that I would be an entrepreneur, but my dad uh, and my mom, they're both amazing entrepreneurs. Um, so my dad started a company with my mom uh, even before I was born. And so the traditional word of entrepreneurship um, didn't really strike me as anything growing up, but it certainly, I certainly have much more of an appreciation for the efforts that my parents have done. Um, so I think that was always instilled in me growing up, but um, I never had, you know, the, the initial inkling that I wanted to start my own company. Um, but certainly now they're oftentimes the first resource when I have questions. Got it. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, does New Panel have other competitors uh, in, in the same space? Because it looks like a very unique, uh, you know, problem that uh, uh, you're trying to solve. But maybe you can share more about, uh, you know, other companies are trying to solve the problem. 
Yeah, uh, certainly. So our first product is a vital signs monitor for newborns. Um, so it measures four different vital signs in a really simple uh, headband, and then the vitals wirelessly connect to a centralized dashboard. So the concept of vital signs monitoring is not novel. That's standard of care around the world for pretty much every patient population in a hospital facility. Um, where we are unique is the appropriate design for these settings. Um, so many of the monitors that we see here in the US, for example, uh, they're these big machines, big, big bulky machines um, that require continuous power that are single use um, or have consumables that are very costly or difficult to maintain. Um, so all of these we have taken out and designed something that is much more appropriate for the settings. Um, now, of course, there are other companies that are interested in medical devices in emerging markets, um, but there are more than enough needs uh, out there that no one is really stepping on each other's toes at this point. I think the, the market market is pretty wide open for the type of work that we're doing. Got it. And, uh, and usually your customers are hospitals and other, you know, uh, medical institutes? Yes, so we are selling to first to private facilities um, where there's still a very strong need, but they have higher purchasing power and less bureaucracy. Um, but of course, there is a strong need in public facilities as well. So we're selling to them through ministries of health typically. Um, and then to scale, we're selling to NGOs uh, that have a presence in over 100 countries. Um, they really have strong relationships with facilities around the world. Okay, um, so so let's talk about uh, you know the unit economics and you know how to uh, how do you create the product because it's it's a physical product and uh, you know if you can just run through uh, you know the whole process and uh, how, how does you know the doctors and nurses get to know about uh, you know the heartbeat of the of the of the, kid, of, the of the babies and all that. Yep, absolutely. So. It's of course a, a lengthy development process just being a medical device. Um, so there are certainly international standards and regulatory agencies that we are following um, to ensure the safety, quality, and efficacy of everything that we create. Um, so with that, we in, initially we spend quite spent quite a bit of time really understanding what the the problem was in the facilities and um, so our problem in particular was that there were just too many critically ill newborns and not enough nurses to help uh, to help them and so often when a baby was in distress nobody would know and then the, these newborns would die from preventable causes um, so that was really what we were targeting um, with the, the problem and so our solution was to help these nurses identify a way to uh, quickly identify when these patients are in distress so they can provide more timely and appropriate treatment to them. So we spend quite a bit of time um, first in facilities really understanding what the needs and conditions are, iteratively designing our solution with and for our nurses and doctors. Um, so we got to Uganda, we have been to nearly a third of the hospitals in Uganda um, really collecting as much feedback as we can um, and in that process, we've been in parallel designing and developing the hardware for it itself, which of course is um, requires many prototypes. Uh, so our initial prototypes are in clinical trials as we speak. So there, we have a trial in Boston right now um, where our devices are uh, being tested on, on newborns in a NICU setting. Um, from here, we'll be transitioning to the next phase where we miniaturize the device, optimize it, make it more ergonomic for newborns, and calibrate it specifically for that patient population. Um, and over the next year, we're ramping up manufacturing, first here in the U.S., um, and then we are selling devices and, and ready for going to market late next year. Okay, and, and, and what is the cost of the uh, product? Yep, so we're selling in packages of 15 wearables and one tablet for 2,500 US dollars. Um, so it's a very cost effective uh, vital signs monitor for the facilities, uh, but we are still expecting 60 to 70% profit margins on that, on the product. Um, there is also a monthly recurring fee of $75 that encompasses more of the customizable data reports that we can generate, but also ongoing education, maintenance, training, all of the components that make traditional equipment fail. Got it. And, uh, but, but you manufacture all the products in U.S.? Yes. Okay. And, and you worked in uh, Uganda and Kenya. So, uh, so do, do you think, uh, you know, hospitals over there have that kind of uh, 
uh, you know, understanding uh, and and the resources to buy, you know, such sort of variables and what what is what are the market sense over there? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, many governments, many private facilities, many NGOs are recognizing the importance of technology um, to really leapfrog some of the issues that they do have. We we have seen this um, with mobile phones uh, that's prolific all over the world, but particularly in emerging markets, even in rural communities, everybody has a mobile phone. Um, so I think the advent of technology and all of the advances that we are seeing in science and tech really can be leveraged uh, to meet the unique constraints that we're seeing in these facilities. And a lot of the administrators, doctors, nurses, all of the purchasers are really excited about technologies that are specifically thinking about their environments. Um, so they, we've seen increases in their budgets for medical equipment, um, increases in budgets for newborn care. There are many different initiatives all over the world, um, even including by the United Nations. They have uh, set a sustainable development goal, particularly to end newborn preventable newborn deaths um, by 2030. So there are many different initiatives related very specifically to what we're doing. We're excited to be uh, amongst the first to be doing some, this type of work. Okay, and um, are you going to focus on Africa only, or are you going to look at other developing countries in like, uh, India and you know um, South American countries? Yeah, certainly looking at expansion of our product. Our initial focus, um, initial entry point into the market is Africa, just because that's where our expertise is. But certainly we see a need um, all over the world. We see a need um, in the countries where 85% of the world's population lives. So any emerging market that, of course, includes India and um, other countries in Southeast Asia, Latin America. Um, we certainly are very much thinking about how to scale our business um, and scale our product globally. Okay, and, and you know, you know, are there any other customer acquisition channels other than uh, you know, uh, tying up with uh, private facilities and hospitals? Are you also going to look at uh, you know spending money on uh, paid ads, or uh, is that something you know? I mean, how do you plan to get the first thousand paid users? Yeah, so we're we're very much focused right now on health facilities um, where there is a strong need for the product itself. Um, now, of course, the sales cycle is a little bit more uh, lengthy to a hospital than it is to a parent, for example. What we see for parents or consumers in general is that typically a newborn um, at home does not necessarily need a vital signs monitor if they if they're healthy, um, and that that's across the world. Um, it does of course give parents peace of mind um, and all sorts of other things, and so we are considering that. Um, but because there is a greater need and impact of our solution in health facilities, that's really where we're targeting our efforts first. Got it. And uh, so you know you you just graduated out of Texas. So, you know, can you tell tell us more about your journey and uh, you know. Did you did you give up some of your equity uh, to be a part of uh, the accelerator? Yes. Um, so TechStars was amazing. We uh, very much loved the program and would highly recommend it to anyone that is uh, starting or growing their business. So um, the, the focus of it is very much uh, mentorship driven. So they help pair you with mentors, um, leading experts, not just in your community, but kind of across the country, around the world. And uh, so we had access to all of these mentors that really enabled us to grow our business very significantly. Um, they do uh, provide capital in in exchange partially for equity and then partially as a convertible note. Um, so there are standard terms for both of those uh, for any company that is coming through Techstars. But for us, the real value was the network and the connections that we were able to make and then a, a very strong cohort um, that was able to help us think about our business in a different way and be able to grow it uh, much more rapidly. Got it. And, um, you know, um, so now you've also used uh, Republic uh, as, a, as a platform to raise uh, some funds. So, you know, you, you know you're from uh, Columbia, you, you've graduated of Techstar. So uh, why, why did you not go through the angel uh, route or, you know, or the VC route? So we're actually doing both. Um, we had originally started the Republic campaign because we wanted to crowdsource ideas. We wanted to crowdsource, uh, be able to involve users around the world um, in the efforts that we're doing starting in Africa. Um, so we, we find that the Republic campaign is a very great way to involve the general public in our efforts. Um, so we've been very excited about the traction and progress we've seen there. I think this morning I checked and we're at $153,000 and going strong from here. So certainly 
um, we've been excited. You know, oftentimes we get notes from many of the investors saying, I have this type of connection or I live um, in another country and would love to bring your product to this market. So we, we get all sorts of ideas from the campaign in addition to the capital. So we're really excited about uh, a lot of the traction that we're seeing there. But in parallel, we are actually raising a round as well. Um, so we do have investors and VCs that are committing to our round um, and this is really in, to enable us to get to the next phase. So really start selling our devices in the market and then rapidly scaling after that. Okay. And, and, and what is the target that you're looking at to, to raise funds? If we're looking at a target of a million dollars uh, at this point. And so the Republic campaign is certainly part of that, but we're nearly a third committed at this point. Okay. And, uh, and what is the money you to be used for? Yeah, it's really two, there are two sides of it. Um, all of it is related to uh, initial sales. Um, so on the product development side, it's setting up our manufacturing lines, um, conducting the clinical trials necessary to get regulatory approval um, and any iterations that are necessary in between that. Um, on our business side, it's certainly focusing on our customer acquisition strategy. So hiring sales managers based in East and West Africa, um, an ops manager, but also thinking about how we can build out our customer pipeline in preparation for sales late in late 2019. Okay, and uh, you know, other than your co-founder, uh, uh, are there any other you know, members in your team uh, who are part of the early founding team? Yes, we um, learned very early on that we needed to have local expertise as well on our team. So we have two amazing uh, coordinators based in Kampala, uh, Uganda. So they, Dorothy is focusing on our program management at this point, program coordinator. So a lot of our business development activities. And Michael is focusing a lot on our clinical trials and research strategies. So we're fortunate to have a team that is on the ground and we work very closely with them to make sure that we are involving our users and stakeholders uh, every step of the way. Got it. Um, so let, let's quickly do the top three. Uh, uh, you know, what is your favorite business book? Hmm. Oh gosh, I read uh, many of them. There's, so I'll talk about books and some newsletters that I also really enjoy. Um, okay. So on the newsletter side, there is a Global Health Now. Um, I think it's by Johns Hopkins, but they send out a daily newsletter um, just being able to talk about some of the issues in global health that are happening around the world, issues or exciting uh, news. So that's one of the ones that I really love. Um, on the book side, there's a couple that come to mind. Um, there's a Lean Startups for Social Change, Social Impact, one of those. Um, and that I really enjoy because it takes the Lean Startup uh, method, but it applies it to social businesses. And so there are certainly unique things um, that apply to being a social enterprise. Um, and, and so this book really helps frame that a little bit better. Um, but just, I think more generally, Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In, uh, I really quite enjoy just being a, a female entrepreneur. I think there's a lot that we could learn from her in her book as well. Awesome. We'll, we'll put that in the show notes. Um, you know, if you could go back in time when you started New Panda, uh, what is the one thing you would have focused on? One thing I would have focused on? Um, I think uh, one, of the, one of the just general pieces of advice that I have is, is being comfortable with the unknown and taking risks um, earlier. So we, as an entrepreneur, you're naturally, you have to take risks. Um, there, there's no doubt about that. And I think um, since we were relatively new to the, the space when we had started, we were a little bit more risk averse than I would have been um, now thinking back. And so I would have moved things a little bit more forward. Um, very early on in the stages. Uh, I think embracing the unknown is something that I've uh, come to learn and love because we, we're we not going to know everything and it's very difficult to grow and, and a company, um, especially with the unknowns. Um, so I think just embracing that a little bit more has been really beneficial for me because now it, it creates more of a culture of adaptability. Um, so that's something that I've learned over the years as well. Got it. And uh, do you have any favorite online tools, for example, you know, uh, LinkedIn, Gmail, Slack? 
Uh, certainly use Slack, which I really enjoy. Um, uh, just in general, all of the Google platforms it is essential to our business. And so Google Drive, of course, and then with our coordinators based in Kampala, we use Google Hangouts a lot. Um, but Slack is probably one of the most productive tools that I have. I also really enjoy Airtable. Um, so it's where we have a lot of our CRM set up as well. Awesome. And, uh, you know, what is the best way people can know about your Republic campaign and what is the best way people can reach out to you? Yeah, so um, we are very much interested in, in chatting with anyone who is interested. Um, our Republic campaign is at republic.co slash neopenda. Um, so I'd encourage you to take a look there. And then uh, we certainly are open to emails, um, info at neopenda.com. If you email that, we'll get back to you very quickly. Uh, right, right, so uh, it was uh, awesome speaking to you. Thank you very much for coming on to the show. I really appreciate speaking to you. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thanks for listening to the Life Self Mastery podcast, where we teach you how to start and grow your online business. For more information, visit Rohit's blog at www.lifeselfmastery.com.